My name is Annet. I'm 36 years old and I want to share an experience I had with my nephew Kagwa. It all began on a cool Kampala evening when my husband Bosco had left early to finish a project at the construction site in Indiba. For the past few months, his workdays had been hectic and long, which had become a common occurrence, leaving me alone for days at a time and preventing us from sharing quality moments together. That particular evening, I was especially tired and feeling lonely, so I decided to go to bed early, taking advantage of the quietness in the empty house. The tranquility embraced me, bringing a comforting sense of peace. At first, I thought I was dreaming, but as I slowly opened my eyes, I saw my nephew, Kagwa, standing there, holding a notebook and looking uneasy, as if he didn't want to wake me. Sorry for waking you, Annette, but I need this notebook for a university assignment and couldn't find it anywhere else, he explained. Kagwa had always been polite and considerate, so his unexpected presence in my room at that hour surprised me. I sat up in bed, adjusted my nightgown, and gave him a reassuring smile. Don't worry, Kagwa, it's all right. Why don't you sit down for a bit? I invited, pointing to a chair beside the bed. He hesitated for a moment but accepted the invitation and sat down. We started talking about his studies and how challenging the final year of university was for him. As he spoke, I noticed how much he had grown and matured. He was no longer the child I remembered but a young man, intelligent and sensitive, qualities I had always admired in him. Thank you for listening, Annette. Sometimes it's hard to find someone to talk to, he admitted with a shy smile. I responded that I would always be there for him. At that moment, I was reminded of how important it is to have a genuine connection like this something I had longed for and which that night filled my solitude. I realized how much our bond held a special meaning for me, awakening deep feelings I couldn't ignore. That night was the beginning of something new and unexpected. In the days that followed, I noticed that Kagwa and I talked more often, and he became a constant presence in my life. Feeling the emptiness left by Bosco's long working hours, our conversations became a welcome pause in my routine. My relationship with Kagwa became a refuge of understanding and support amid the loneliness. We often met in the kitchen or sometimes in my bedroom, where we discussed various topics. On one specific night, after one of those conversations, something shifted. We were talking about his studies and future aspirations when he curiously asked if I had ever thought about pursuing my own dreams. His question caught me by surprise, as no one had asked me that in a long time. I answered honestly, sharing my forgotten aspirations and how my life with Bosco, though comfortable, sometimes felt like a trap, especially with the time he dedicated to his project, which seemed to pull us further and further apart. Kagwa looked at me with a mix of understanding and compassion. It must be hard, aunt. I've always seen you as a strong person, but we all need someone to lean on, he said. His words resonated deeply within me. I had gotten used to being the pillar that kept everything in order, but I had forgotten how much I needed emotional support myself. With his youth and empathy, Kagwa offered me an unexpected comfort. As the night went on, the connection between us flowed naturally. We laughed, shared secrets, and created a bond deeper than I could have imagined. At one point, I realized something had shifted. I noticed the way Kagwa looked at me, the warmth in his smile and the depth in his eyes. I tried to attribute these feelings to the loneliness and vulnerability of the moment, but it was hard to ignore. There was something in his closeness that stirred long-forgotten sensations within me. He broke my thoughts by suggesting I get some rest, and before leaving, he assured me he would always be there if I needed him. That night, a mixture of conflicting emotions filled me. When I was alone, I realized I was thinking about him more than I should. In the following weeks, Kagwa became a frequent presence, especially on the nights Bosco worked late. Our meetings, initially marked by light conversations and moral support, began to take on a different depth over time. 
On one particular afternoon, after opening up about the growing distance between Bosco and me, I messaged Kagwa, and he soon showed up, sitting in the garden. We talked about various things to ease my mind, but something felt different that evening. Kagwa's gaze was intense in a way that sent shivers down my spine. It wasn't the look of a nephew but of a man, and it awakened a liveliness in me that I hadn't felt in a long time. I tried to justify what I was feeling as just a reflection of my loneliness, but the more I reflected, the more I realized there was something simmering between us. At one point, as he reached for a notebook that had fallen, our hands briefly touched, but it was enough to ignite a spark. Our eyes met, and in that instant I knew he had felt it too. Is everything okay? he asked, his voice filled with concern and something deeper. I nodded, surprised by the intensity of the moment. We sat in silence until he broke the spell, whispering that this wasn't right. I took a deep breath and pulled my hand back, but I knew these feelings wouldn't disappear so easily. The first real connection between Kagwa and me happened one night when the tension between us was at its peak. We were talking as usual, but there was something different in the air. The conversation took on a more personal and intimate tone, and I felt that we were crossing an invisible line. At one point, Kagwa leaned over to pick up a notebook he had dropped and his hand touched mine. This time, it wasn't just an accidental touch. His fingers intertwined with mine, sending a shiver down my spine. When our eyes met, I realized he felt the same desire burning within me. I'm not sure what's happening, but I can't ignore it, I whispered, my heart pounding as I searched for words. I don't know either, Annette, but maybe we can face this together, he replied with a gentle look and a soft voice. Kagwa wrapped me in a hug, a gesture full of warmth and affection, and I held on to him, feeling his body close to mine, aware that there was no going back. The desire I had repressed for so long finally surfaced. When our lips met, the kiss started out tentative but quickly turned intense, and all concerns about morality and consequences faded away. After that first kiss, we fell silent for a moment, both breathing heavily, overcome by the emotions that had been released. This is crazy, I whispered, still feeling the urgency of the contact. I know, Annette, but I can't help it. I need to be close to you, he replied with disarming sincerity. Without further words, I let myself be swept away by the moment, embracing him again, our kisses growing more intense and passionate. The room seemed to be filled with a palpable energy, and before we knew it, we were in bed, our bodies entwined in a dance of passion and surrender. The intimacy shared that night went beyond the physical, creating a deep connection, as if our souls were finally understood and accepted. That night, as we finally drifted to sleep, I felt a peace I hadn't experienced in a long time. However, deep down, I knew this stolen happiness came with a price. In the weeks that followed, we lived a whirlwind of emotions and clandestine encounters, doing our best to leave no trace, which only added an aura of adrenaline and forbidden passion. Each new meeting mixed love with the constant anxiety of being discovered. Yet, we continued, night after night. One evening, as we lay together, discussing the meaning of it all for us, a tension of worry and emotion filled the air. Annette, I don't know how much longer we can keep this up, Kagwa said, his voice heavy with unease. We need to be careful. I suggest we find a way to be together without risking everything. He looked at me with a seriousness he rarely showed, and a spark of hope appeared in his eyes. We agreed to keep our relationship discreet and took all the necessary precautions to avoid being discovered, but the intensity of our feelings only grew. Each encounter became a mix of fleeting love and the constant fear of the forbidden. With a voice marked by concern, I said that I could no longer be without him and that it was too late to turn back. Breaking the silence, Kagwa suggested that we could keep seeing each other in secret but with extreme caution. We can't afford to make mistakes, he said with determination. I nodded, realizing that this was our only option for the time being. Thus, we sealed our pact, deciding to keep our relationship hidden, 
fully aware of the risks but determined to face them for the love that bound us together. One night, as we were one night as we were together in my room, we heard a noise coming from the living room. In a moment of panic, I pulled Kagwa into the closet. He was pale and trembling, and a wave of guilt washed over me. This is too risky, I whispered. He agreed, his voice trembling, and said we needed to be more careful. I nodded, admitting he was right. We had been lucky that time, but we couldn't rely on it forever. We needed to be smarter and more discreet. Still, I noticed in his eyes that he wasn't entirely convinced that suspicions had been cleared. I knew it would be hard to fully escape them. Two weeks after that incident, Kagwa was focused on his final exams in his last year of university. Meanwhile, I began feeling unwell, plagued by nausea for several weeks. Deep down, I knew something was wrong, and the emotional toll of what was happening weighed heavily on me. I tried to ignore it and not dwell too much on it. One day, when Bosco returned from completing a project he had been working on, he suggested we take a trip to celebrate. I agreed but mentioned that I was feeling a bit sick and needed to go to the hospital. Worried, Bosco called a doctor to come to our house. Hours later, after the tests, the doctor confirmed with a smile that I was two months pregnant. Bosco was surprised and confused, questioning how this could have happened since it had been a while since we'd been intimate. I agreed to go on the trip, and once we returned home I prepared myself to explain the situation. After listening to the entire story, Bosco stood up, packed his bags, and cut off contact with me. I was devastated, consumed by the guilt that seemed to suffocate me. At the same time, I realized my feelings for Kagwa had deepened even further. Between passion and the mistakes I had made, I didn't have the courage to tell Kagwa what had happened, hoping he could finish his internship at the university in peace. Now, I find myself at a crossroads, overcome with intense and conflicting emotions. If you like this story, please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and share.